and welcome to another episode of Real Talk with Terry After Hours. I'm excited to welcome back our resident sex expert, Miss Bree. Welcome back to Real Talk with Terry. Hi, everyone. Hi. So this evening, we have a somewhat controversial topic. Um, I don't know if it's controversial or if it's more is split down generational lines, but as we get into the discussion, we'll see how this goes. So I reached out to Bree and I'm like, hey, what do you want to talk about this month? And she was like, I don't know. Let me think about it. And I'm like, hey, what about this can men and women be friends? Can they be BFFs? Can they be platonic friends? So I was like, let's talk about that because um, that is always, it always makes for an interesting discussion. Can men and women be friends? So, I mean, what say you, Brie? Can men and women be friends? So here's the thing. I think that technically speaking, yes. However, if you are attracted to that friend, it goes beyond the platonic stage. I, I know in my experience, I don't have any male friends and we are only friends and I'm attracted to them or they're attracted to me. It just doesn't work. And you can say it's going to start off like that, like you start off as friends. But as humans, we are sexual beings. And I'm not saying that we just go around having sex with everybody and anybody. I'm not saying that. But when you start to develop a friendship with someone, you also kind of start to experience a different type of intimacy with them. Because remember, intimacy is not just sex. So mm-hmm. intimacy is those conversations. You start to fall for their intellect in this whole little quote unquote friendship. And then they look good too. It's the perfect storm for a situation sexual attraction to occur i agree i agree so and and that's the key thing that you said is if one or the other because it doesn't even have to take both you know one person could totally not be attracted to the other and just say hey this is my friend i'm feeling them i like to hang out or whatever but then if the other person whether it's the male or the female is attracted to them i think that's where in the long run you can run into some problems and then i want to th- i, I want to throw this caveat into there okay if you have two <laughs> single people that are friends hey whatever go for it but what if one or both of the people are married and i i'm married i've been married for you know over 17 years now and this is always a good one especially for newlyweds and they're like oh yeah she got this bff and they went to college together or whatever and it's, it's really bad if they used to date it's like i don't know how you work that out or how you could reconcile that but that is always a hot topic in it amongst married people. Like, can a married person have a BFF of the opposite sex? So, so you're married. I want to hear from you. You know, I've been married. I am no longer married. So my opinion is from the single perspective. Right. So I want to hear your opinion as a married woman. What are your thoughts? Would you allow your husband to have a female bestie? You know what? It's it's interesting that you say that because when my husband and I first got married, my husband did have a really good friend who was of the opposite sex. And the interesting thing, she was a she was a good friend, coworker. I knew her as well and was her friend. But I think that her and my husband had a closer friendship and she was married. My husband was single. He was a divorcee. Um, and they worked together. They worked together, went to church together. They hung out together. The, the husbands were friends. And so naturally she was friends with him. And, you know, they would have lunch together at work and stuff. And I'm like, oh, okay. But I did not have- <laughs> How did that make you feel? You know what? I did not have a problem with it only because, yes, on the one hand, I trusted her, but on the other hand, I really trusted my husband. And I did not feel at that time that he was perhaps 
trying to hide anything. And the same thing with right. her, because interestingly enough, they were such good friends. And like I said, me and her were friends that when he wanted to know who I was, who do you think he went to? He went to her. He was like, hey, do you know that girl, Terry, that go to our church? And she's like, yeah, I know her. That's my soror. And so she put in a good word for me. So in that respect, um, I was like, I just did not feel um, like threatened by that friendship in any kind of way. Now, what I will say, the longer that we have been married, they are not, say, as close as they once were. And that's just because, I mean, people grow, people, you know, she changed jobs, right. my husband changed jobs, changed companies. And so just naturally, you know, the friendship just kind of, you know, you know, different phases of life. So I just think it ran right. its course. So for me in that situation, um, you know, it, I didn't have a problem with it, but I do know a lot of people that have problems with their husband or their wife having a BFF, um, you know, of the opposite sex. And I think where you run into issues is if you find yourself sharing things and or doing things with this friend that you are not doing with your spouse. Because that most people, when they think of cheating, they think, you know, oh, you know, you, you're cheating on your spouse because you're cutting out in terms of sexual, the sex or whatever. And you brought up a key point in your opening statement where you said that, you know, relationships, it's not, it's not all intimacy. It's not all about sex, or should I say it's not all about sex because you can be intimate in other ways. And one of them is communication, communicating and doing things that you enjoy with each other. So I think when the relationship crosses those boundaries where you are sharing things with your friend of the opposite sex or whatever, that you're not necessarily sharing with your spouse or you're, you would much rather, you know, go to a game or go hang out with your friend instead of your spouse I think that's when you're starting to bridge over into some dangerous waters some dangerous territory but for me right. like I said um that friendship I mean it just naturally ran its course so I just never had the opportunity to think that wow this is inappropriate because I mean he would even come home and just an hour talking and sharing and then he would be like hey I had lunch with such and such and you know and and she he would tell me what they talked about yeah we talked about this we talked about that most of the time they were talking about work stuff you know and then he would bring me into the fold so I did not feel like he was doing anything where I'm like hmm so he had lunch with her again so I never felt like you know threatened or anything like that so that's how I handle mine now I have heard of other situations where it's not quite like <laughs> that and like I said you know if you find you know and I I think it's probably more of an issue when you have one friend that say single and one friend that's married I think I have a whole lot to say about that <laughs> My perspective is a little different. So I, I do agree, but I have a little different perspective. So uh -huh. the first part I want to say is that for me, it depends on the relationship. So for example, if they have been friends before I came into the picture, mm -hmm. oh, I'm not threatened by that at all. Because to me, I feel like, well, if you wanted her, you would have been with her already. Mm -hmm. You know, you 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 kept it in the friend zone, both of y'all decided to keep it in the friend zone. So that's that. Now, after we get together... <laughs> It's April 25th. We get together April 26th. No new friends. No. <laughs> what you need a new best friend for? I'm your best friend now. <laughs> They're not already your friend. They cannot be your friend. Because I feel like, why are you getting close with someone else at this point? Like, you can't, do, to me, there is no point of developing a close-knit relationship with a person of the opposite sex past me. It just mm -hmm. doesn't make sense to me. Now, that could be my immaturity or whatever you want to call it, people may disagree with me, but for me, I feel like, and it's not even just about being territorial or feeling insecure, but I just feel like, why are you building something with someone else, like another female? I'm not saying I have to be your only friend. Like I said, I'm accepting and I welcome with open arms any female that you've been close to before me. But after me, no, because my thing is, how are y'all getting so close? Why are y'all getting so close? And, and in my head, I always think about like work besties, you know, like spouses or, or our spouses, they spend a lot of time at work with other people. Mm -hmm. And so for me, it's almost like it's, it creates the perfect ground 
for cheating to occur because you're with this person so much. And if you're talking and you're establishing that type of relationship, I'm having red flags. Like, why are you talking to them this much? And, and I do agree with your point. Um, you know, what is the nature of the conversation? But I just feel like it's no sense of you trying to become best friends with another female after me. It just doesn't make sense to me. And then the second part you said was, it helps if one or both of the people are married. Now, my my perspective is a little different on that because I actually know people who have told me that they cheated with another married person because they had just as much to lose as that person did. Wow. So when both of you are married, then it's like, well, you know, we're going to keep it on the low. You know, we're going to keep it a secret because you don't want to ruin your marriage. And I don't want to ruin my marriage. So it's literally the perfect storm for cheating. Mm. when both parties are married that's a good point when only one is married that's more dangerous because that other person that single person may get really attached and they have nothing to lose so then it's like oh i'm going crazy over you now i want you to leave your wife or i want you to leave your husband and be with me and it's like no like that's not that's not what we discussed right that's not that's not happening right that (laughs) is rare that that actually happens that a person will leave their spouse for the other person it does happen but it's not it's not common it's it's rare so i mean i think the only reason that is rare honestly is because usually in marriages especially when you've been married for years y'all have built so much together and so basically that that cliche term is cheaper to keep her but here's the thing though here's the thing though men are so sneaky they will still try to keep both so it's like i'm not divorcing my wife i'm not leaving my wife but i still want you to be my girlfriend too Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so they have the best of everything they do they do i i I don't even want to bring some dirty laundry in here but (laughs) you you just brought up so much and i mean i do agree with you when you say the whole no new friends because not that i'm trying to clarify anything but my husband with the person that he was friends with on his job they were like i mentioned they were friends before me because like i said me and her we were still our friends and sorors so i totally agree with you on that whole no new friends is like why are you investing time in another friendship or relate kind of relationship when you can be building ours so I totally agree with that so like I say I don't necessarily fully agree with you on the whole you know it's safer with one of them is single and one is married but I get your point you're right you know and when both got something to lose you're absolutely right it's like "Mm, okay but to me it's almost like you would somebody would have a level head and they're like hey we're affecting too many people you know I got a wife perhaps and kids you got a husband and maybe some children you know I don't know that's not some mature people I don't know nobody who thinks like that when they are cheating is I want to meet my (laughs) needs right now like they're not people when people cheat honestly it's cheating is in itself a selfish nature Mm -hmm. so you're not thinking about how you're hurting the other person or how you're facing the other person all you're thinking about is I like being with you you make me feel good I like what we have together I like this chemistry that's all that I'm focused on in this moment I don't care about ruining your family I don't care about any of that stuff Mm -hmm. so I feel like just realistically speaking people definitely don't care it's like that's why i think the best cheating situation is when both people are married because they both have something (laughs) yeah it's like they both have something to lose you you know that's a point where we don't entirely agree although i do see your point you know but we don't entirely (laughs) agree on that but i mean it's it's just you brought up one you said something that i don't want us to like gloss over and you said a lot of times men you know they just want it all they want the best of both worlds and oh god i know of a situation well it it is not even a situation it is several situations where you will have a guy he he will marry a woman have a family then he'll have a mistress i mean for years i mean not just a one night stand or we kind of hooked up for a little short season but i mean a mistress for the same one for years and I mean I'm like what are you holding on to and it's almost like I feel like there probably is some kind of psychology thing behind that because for the woman who who chooses 
to stay with a man for whatever reason that is married for years. And it's clear that they're not going to leave their family. It's like, are you waiting? Is What is he telling this woman? Like, you know, wait until, right. Like wait until I'm waiting until my children are older and then I'm going to leave her. Or, I mean, I just don't know what a man could say to a woman to make her. But you know what? I don't even think it's just about him telling the woman, oh, wait until this, wait until that. I think it's also, in my mind, when I picture men who have long-term mistresses, honestly, that mistress knows her role. She knows she's second. She knows that she is not going to um, ever become the wife. He's not leaving the wife. And she's okay with that. She's accepted her position in that, but she's also been fulfilled in the fact that no, she don't get all his time, but she does get some of his time. Men invest in their mistresses. They buy them cars. They help pay for mortgages and rents. They buy, you know, furnished shopping sprees. I think about when I only really men with money can really afford to have a mistress. Yes. So that's always what's in my mind when I hear. <laughs> so I don't understand how broke mistress. broke man can have a mistress. You really got to be working with something else, but. <laughs> <laughs> Right, right. It's basically to stay that long. So it's like, you know, when I think about that, like men who have money, they can't afford to have a long-term mistress. And honestly, if you think about what satisfies a female, we love material things. Now, I'm not saying that that's everything for us, but you buy us a bag or you buy us, you know, I want a Lexus. You buy me a Lexus, I'm good. I'm good. Okay, okay. Well, I'm second, but I got my Lexus. <laughs> exactly. That is true. That just is- for the record, I would never be a mistress. Let me make that clear. <laughs> I say you will never be a mistress. <laughs> no, 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 no. I am not mistress material because I want all your time. Thank but you. Mistresses definitely are comfortable with the arrangement. And they know that from the beginning because that's another thing too. Like when when women become a mistress. They already know, okay, this man was married when I met him. We have our routine. We have our rules. This is what it is. And I'm fine with that. Mm. And they're okay in that role because they, they're complacent. They don't care to want anything more or to want a man for themselves. And to your point, it could be something that's mental going on because like who would even settle for that? But for some women, that they're totally fine with it. You're absolutely right. I mean, because the situations that I know of, the women were totally fine with it and to me it's unfair to the mistress because the interesting thing about it is they don't date other people they are like faithful to that cheating man yep. and I'm like are you yep. kidding me I'm like are yep. you kidding me <laughs> I'm like this yep. man is married and has a family you are the mistress and you are faithful to this cheating man but they are I mean you know, so crazy, you know a lot of men will tell them a lot of men will tell them, I'm not messing with my wife like that. We're just together for the kids. We don't even sleep in the same room. You know, it's literally just a show of facade. You're right. You're absolutely right. And they feel like they're meeting a need that the wife is not necessarily meeting, whether it could be true or it's probably a lie, but they believe it. That is a good yep. point. And we want to hear from you out there. I want to hear what you guys have to say about this. You know, can men and women, can they be platonic friends? Is it, you know, easier for the two to break up and get together if they both are married or if one is single and the other is married? That's kind of a point where we don't fully agree on that. But um, I'm interested to see what, you know, what the people have to say. Um, And do you have anything else? Yeah, I was going to add, when you're, when, when both of you are both invested in another relationship, that other person is not just sitting around waiting on you all the time mm-hmm. as in most common mistress situations. So like, you know, the situations where you've seen in movies and sometimes in real life where the mistress blows up and goes crazy and exposes herself to the wife and things like that. If you have your own situation going on, that's less likely to happen because mm-hmm. there's like a certain level of understanding. Mm-hmm. Like when I'm not with you, I'm with my husband. When I'm not with you, I'm with my wife. So then when we not with them, we with each other. So it's kind of like a, oh, this is perfect. I get my little thing on the side and then I get to go play wifey with my husband. True. Or my wife. I get to play hubby with my wife. 
that's true you bring a good point (laughs) I mean you know what it's interesting because I mean it can go both ways too it can it we're kind of focusing in or zoning in on the man naturally because we're women but I mean hey women are hey we are not all angels I'll never forget when um my husband and I we were going through premarital counseling which was one of the things that our pastor required at that time before he would marry you so we were going through premarital counseling and he he was just, you know, talking to me and talking to us, just sharing that. The interesting part about once you get married, he was like, Terry, I wouldn't be shocked. You will probably see more men try to like hit on you or try to come on to you now that you're married than when you were single. And I'm like, why? I'm like, no. He was like, no. He was like, listen here. He was like, first and foremost, your husband's going to take good care of you. Okay. He was like, so that's like no liability for a man who just want what they want. He was like, so you would be almost like the perfect person that a particular man would come after that's married and, you know, they just want to, you know, have a good time or have somebody on the side. Those kind of guys, they go after married women that are well taken care of because it's like, you know what? You can't do nothing for me that my husband is not already doing for me and doing for our family or what I can do for myself. So for a lot of men, they find that attractive. And do you know what? I kid you not. It's almost like the day I said I do, the next day, um, um, I mean, I am not almost like exaggerating. I don't know what it is about having on a ring and a band, or I don't know what it is about maybe it's that Mary woman glow, but it would just be guys out the woodworks and it ha- hasn't necessarily stopped. You know, people, they'll, you know, guys, they'll come on to me and I'm like, I'm married. They kind of like, I don't care. <laughs> And I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I even have a funny um, incident that happened at the gym because I don't wear jewelry or makeup to the gym. I I look like a real hot mess. But um, this man, you know, was just real nice to me at the gym. And it's okay. I'm a Southern belle. I'm nice to everybody too. But that don't mean nothing just because I'm nice and friendly and I smile. Hey, how you doing? Blah, blah, blah. I have small talk. And all of a sudden, this man, I will never forget He asked me out after a few months of exchanging cordialities. That may not be a word, but after a few months of being cordial in the gym, I'll never forget. He walked over and he asked me out. And I said, I said, you know, I'm married because my husband works out at the same gym, although he would come super, super early and I would be on the tail end of the morning crew. And I was like, Uh I said, you know, I'm married. And I'll never forget how he kind of paused and dude was like, well, actually, I am too. <laughs> yes. Yes. Now, that was really bold. That but you know bold. what? I was going to say that, like, married men, I can honestly say I have had more married men shoot their shot at me yes. than I have had. And I do, I'm like, It almost made me feel some type of way. Like, do I have some kind of target on my back that says I sleep with married men? Like, I don't understand. Like, I don't understand married men. And then the thing about it too, they go even harder than the single men. Yes, they do because he did not stop. (laughs) You are absolutely right. Because I think I, I must say for me, in my experience, I do have more single men that try to shoot their shot but in this particular case this gentleman he was married and when I told him that I was married and then he was kind of like well actually I am too and so I thought that was going to be the end of it he was kind of still standing there like like you want to go out and I'm like no (laughs) I'm like no I'm like I don't want to go out I'm like no I'm like I'm I'm good you know I'm I'm, I'm Kato good over here I'm good and so it was just so kind of it was funny to me And of course, I told my husband, I was like, yeah, this guy at the gym, you know, and I'm just being nice to him. And the next thing I know, he asked me out on a date and Lloyd was like, oh, wow. I said, but no, I said, I told him I was married. I said, but then you know what he said after I told him I was married? He was like, what? I said, he was like, oh, well, actually I am too. (laughs) I'm like, so what, is he going to be like, all of us, we going on a double date, me, him, (laughs) you, his wife, you know, we going on a double date to get tea, to get coffee. I'm like, was that his idea? Like, you know, so I... I just that just like floored me I mean I was just I don't know I was just like wow and of course my husband he just kind of laughed it off I was like okay you need to change gyms I'm like whatever I'm like just it was like 
I'm like, okay, interesting. But yeah, baby, he, he, what is it? He shot his shot. He was not afraid to shoot his shot um, at all. I was like, okay, interesting. So that, wow. so that, so that being said, I mean, how do you want to wrap this up? Um, I will wrap it up by saying that while platonic friendships can happen, you don't need no new best friends after me. <laughs> Hello. Thank you. And that's how I'm wrapping it. And then my thing too is like, if you want a, a new best friend, it, it, it needs to be someone that we mutually are hanging out with. Like maybe we all engaged in this hobby together. So we all hang out together. There's no one-on-one activities past me. No. Absolutely. And it's not about trust. It's just, it's just about, I mean, we're humans. Like I said, we're sexual beings, especially when you've been married for so long and you have, you know, you have the same partner and sometimes you do get that urge like, oh, I want to try something new. Like, nope, I don't need you trying to get no ideas, trying something new with nobody. Nope. Hello. <laughs> I, I co-sign that. I totally agree. I like what you said. After marriage, it's like no new friends. You should be investing that time in your spouse. You know, I mean, and, and honestly, and that goes for even the same sex. I mean, I think you can, you know, sometimes yeah. um, go overboard with friends of the same sex, you know, because again, you should be investing in your marriage. You got to put into the marriage pot. You know, you, you can't invest in other areas more than what you invest in your own marriage. So I totally co-sign on that. I agree. Um, and as we get ready to wrap this up, would you like to, would you like any, any closing statements? Nope. That's my closing statement. All right. <laughs> no new friends for all of you in marriages or long-term relationships. No new friends. <laughs> I agree. No new friends. And, and I also want to say, I will close with this because you mentioned, you know, we are, we are sexual beings. We are intimate beings. And what I think, I just like to bring the spiritual aspect into it. I believe you're opening up the door for the enemy. You know, it can start out innocent and then I just feel like you're leaving a door open for anything to happen and you want to be careful of the tricks of the enemy because he ain't got no new tricks and we are not smarter <laughs> we are human <laughs> so I just want to stay I just want to leave you with that so hey drop your comments in the chat you know um, hit us up on social media and let you know let us know what you think about this can men and women um, be platonic friends, especially if they're married. I just want to hear what everybody else have to say. So until next time, um, we will talk later and have a great day. Thank you. Bye. Bye.